let's see. What will we start? What would you like to talk about first? No, come on. You're doing this. You want me to? You want me to start? Okay, let's talk about Atlantic City. Atlantic City. Oh, Atlantic City. That's my second home. But I never was able, oh, I couldn't say this about Vicky, but I was never able to to meet Vicky, but I met her sister. Because I had a check room here in New York, and she worked for me. Mm. You know, she uh, used to help me with the coats and stuff. What was the name of the place that you worked in? I don't place? remember. It was on 47th Street. I'm talking about New York City now. No, Atlantic City. What was the oh, name of the place in Atlantic, Atlantic City? Atlantic City. I worked quite a few places. I worked at the Club Harlem, which was a groovy joint. And then I also worked at a place called uh, Little Belmont, Grace's Little Belmont, which people thought that it was my place. Is that the place that was the after hours place? No, I never, they didn't need no after hours spots in, in Atlantic City. Cause the bar, the bar stayed open 24 hours. Somebody told me that when, when the acts would get finished at the 500 Club. That they would come on. over to the Little Belmont, which was a bar. Or either come to the Club Harlem, which was the bar where all the shows were. Now the only thing that we had in the little in the little Belmont was uh, like Bill Bill Davis, uh, the fellow who plays the drum and and does that on the seat. I can't think of his name, but I'll get to it. Um, and we had little things like that, and like uh, I don't know whether you know. Uh, Dayton Selby. He's a piano player, and he's one of my f good friends. And he worked there, and different people. And also, um, what is the fella's name that's a piano player, and he's a big uh, musician? Ch Taylor? I'll Billy think Taylor? Dr. Billy Taylor. Billy Taylor. He worked for uh, at my place. At my place, because that's the way I ran it. <laughs> and and do you ever remember, I mean, after they'd be finished at the 500 Club, would Frank, did Frank Sinatra ever go there? No. Not when I was there, honey. No. And Sammy would go? Would he come over? Oh, just a moment. I remember now. One time I was, um, the Belmont was closed, or I wasn't working. And I was across the street in the Club Harlem. And Sinatra and his entourage, what do you call that? Entourage. Walked down Kentucky Avenue, honey, and passed the Belmont. And I was across the street in the Club Harlem, and he came over. Was that when he knew Sammy, or was that before he knew Oh, Sammy? no, he knew Sammy. My goodness, yes. Do you remember the first time Sammy ever told you that he met Frank Sinatra? Do you remember when that was? I don't know, honey. Frank was Sammy's angel. You know, he loved this man very, very much. And, and uh, he could upset Sammy in a minute, you know, because Sammy was very sensitive. And his friends could hurt his feelings. And for not, Sinatra was a friend. Wherein you and I could say something to him, he say, "Ah, oh, go to heck," you know, one of them things. Well, for, they, it had been written that Frank was always trying to kind of be a daddy to Sammy to get him to like stop drinking too much. Well, I, that I don't know because I was like I told you before, I was not around Sammy that much when like in California, and then Sinatra and him weren't on in, in the East as much as they would be out there. But I don't know about that. But I wish he had succeeded. You know, I wish he had. Well, you remember you told me that um, that it seemed as though Sammy's moods would change if, if, if he were having a problem with Frank? In a minute. It's just like, um, well, I can't say this. But I used to kid Sam. And I say, hey, wait a minute now, which one of you is a girl? You know, because that's the way you act if your husband or your wife do something to you and uh, it, it it hurts you. But, I mean, 
Sinatra could say a, a word and it would upset Sammy because Sammy, he was Sammy's God. That's the way I felt. Did you ever see Sammy at the Capitol in 47 when he was w- on the bill with Sinatra? No, ma'am. Because I shouldn't have said no, ma'am. It's all right. It's no problem. Uh, no, I wasn't able to get to my breakfast when, when the Capitol was running. You know, I wasn't doing anything. Right. Deborah, give me a tissue so that... Uh, What's the matter? Every once in a while, it's right behind you in a box so that, uh, so that we can dab her head if she's warm. What's the matter? Oh, just a little, a little perspiration, moisture. A moisture I want to dab your forehead, yeah. So, Deborah, you can oh, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. Yeah, I can see it. I can just see it. A, oh, okay. A so, Deborah's just going to keep you uh, so that, yeah, great. Don't oh, you all are trying to make out like I'm a, a star. Well, no, yeah. it just it looks, looks that, nice. Looks, that, yeah, that's okay. fine. Okay. So, um, all right. So, tell me, do you, is there any story about Sam when, um, when he was in the service, when he was in World War II, when Sammy was in the service? He went well, the no, uh, you see, when Sammy was in the Army, he was out west and I was in Atlantic City. But I used to have some of the fellas, when they turned the hotels over to the soldiers in Atlantic City, then some of the fellas knew where I was working and they would come by and then I'd ask him how Sammy was doing. But the only stories that I have heard Sammy tell was when uh, he first went in the Army and how they treated him. You know, like, uh, being very prejudiced with him, you know. So that's about it. Uh, can you tell me um, how you heard, uh, we were talking about it the other day when Sammy was in the car accident and what happened when you went to California? Hold on, just hold that for a second. Okay. You want me to say Don't that? Don't move it if we have to go do no, it. No, it's only because um, You want me to do that? Thing over to the left. That's okay. fine. Okay, we're all set. You want me to say what I told you? Okay. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go back over that again. I want you to say what you told me about what he, what, what happened to him on his eye. Well, I didn't find out. I heard it on the news, and it was in the paper, and I was working at a bar on Broadway. But I had just left Atlantic City with the lady that I worked for, and I talked to Will. Because when I heard that Sammy had the accident, I wanted to go to California. I had never been. So uh, uh, Will said to me, you don't need to come. I mean, he's all right. He'll be all right. I called up the lady that I used to work for in Atlantic City, which I still did in the the summertime. I I, uh, called her up, and she lent me the money to go to California. Well, when I got to California, the only place that I knew was where my, my uh, Sammy's father was living. He didn't live there, but he used to go there where all his friends were. So I went there, and the place was horrible to me. Sammy found out where I was living, with his, where his father was, and he sent a car for me to come up to Sunset Boulevard or Sunset Strip, whatever it was then. And I went into this little place on Sunset, and that's where I stayed until I left. Tell me about Frank when you went out there and how Frank got the house for Sammy when he got out of well, the Well, this was the, during the time that he lost the same time when he lost. Somebody got the house. Now, I wouldn't say who it was, but I think it was Frank. And it was a lovely house. It was like on a hill. And uh, there was uh, Marilyn Monroe and all of those, that, that cl- uh, group of people. Big Sam was there with his friend. This girl uh, that I had told you about, she was uh, Billy Eckstein's wife. She's a real estate lady. Lauren Bacall. And they were all there. Lauren Bacall? Lauren Bacall? No, she wasn't there. No. 
I just met her like one. I don't know how I met her, where Sammy had taken me to meet her. But I never, I don't remember her, uh, her husband, you know. Right. But Frank was there, right? When Sammy, was Frank there when Sammy lost his eye? He, he must, he, well, I imagine so, but he wasn't at the party. He wasn't at the house. Marilyn Monroe was there. Marilyn Monroe, God bless her. And how how was Marilyn Monroe there? Was she a friend of Sammy's in those oh, days? Oh, she was a friend of all of them, you know. But uh, she's very, she, she had a inferior, to me, she had an inferiority complex. You know, as gorgeous as she was, you know. But uh, she was very introvert. She was an introvert. And I don't think I should have used those two words together. And how was, and, and how long did it take Sammy to come back after he lost his eye? Well, I don't think it took him too long because after I came back to New York, that's when he opened up at Ciro's with the patch. And that's when Sinatra, Dean, and I don't know who else, all came on the stage with the patch. And it was marvelous. He liked that. Yeah. You, did you get the feeling from Sammy that he needed that companionship of those guys, that those guys meant a lot to him? Well, as a child, to me, that didn't have any family life. Of course, he had a grandmother, but she lived in New York. I lived in New York, and whenever he came in town, she would stay there for a minute. But then he'd be back with the people that he was brought up with. He didn't have no kids to play with. The poor child, he didn't. So when he got older, you think that's why he, he so much liked being in that group with them? With well, those, that's all he knew, darling. Like one time, my husband, I was working at the Little Belmont, and the phone rang, Terrible. and it was for me. So wait, when wait I, a second. Terrible. Oh? Wait, wait, one second. We're hearing, we're hearing traffic. We'll just have to wait until the light changes. Okay. It's just a, What's the matter? We're hearing well, the, the traffic trucks. noise. Oh. Yeah. Because the microphones are so much more sensitive than, uh, than your ears. They pick up low. From, okay, we're clear. Go ahead. Sorry about that. That's good. So tell us. Yeah, we're, we're all clear now. Go. All right. So, so Sammy called. You were saying Sammy? No, I said the phone rang and it was Big Sam. So uh, anytime he called me monkey, I knew he wanted something. So I said, what's wrong? He said, do you know that Sammy is going to marry a white woman? They were, they were in Canada. So I said, no, I didn't. I said, but what else, what else did he know but white women? Because up in Canada during that time, you never had any sharp black girls, you know? And he toured a lot in Canada? In Canada and Boston. And his father didn't like the idea that he was going to marry a white woman? Well, that's all he, that's, well, that's all Big Sam had. <laughs> I knew that, you know. But you know, at one time, I never told you this. When Sammy got old enough, being up in Boston and being up in Canada, I went to the Children's Society downtown to see whether Sammy could go to school. So when I got down there, they told me, is he the father? Of the boy, I said yes. He said, "Then you, the mother?" I said yes. He said, "Well, he's got as much right to to the boy as you have." Now that's what they told me sixty-five years ago, but today you know that wouldn't happen. Then I got with Bojangles, and I've never told this story to nobody. I got with Bojangles and I worked with him for t two weeks and I said to him, is there anything you can do for me that will make my child go to school? That they would make my, uh, make my husband 
put Sammy in school. So he did something for me. He stopped Sammy from working in New York. Only after 12 o'clock Saturday night, Sammy could come in and stay until Sunday night at 12 o'clock. Because any time that they came in town, the law would have gotten my husband. You understand? Well, you said something to me the other day that I thought was very, very interesting, that I, that I wanted to include, that I wanted you to repeat. And I, I'm going to paraphrase, because I can't remember your exact words. But you said to me that your son uh, had never, never set foot in a schoolroom, but he visited two presidents at the White He House. did what? You said, my son never put set foot into a schoolroom, but he went to the White House to see two presidents. And I thought that was such a... Oh, yes. I he thought never... that was such a great thing. Now, do we have traffic outside still? A little bit. A little bit? Yes, he never went to, to school a day in his life. And that's why I was trying to get Bojangles to intercede because during that time, Bo was a big man, you know. And I figured that he would know somebody that would make my son, I mean, would make my son's father put him in school. But it never happened. But God knew what he was doing because he probably would have went to school and would not have been the man he was the day he died. That was fine, we got it, no problem with the sound. Right. Okay. So can you say that to me? Can you just say that for the camera about <clears throat> my son never set foot in a schoolroom? But how many times did he go to the White House? I don't know. Well, he went, to, I know, see, he I went know. to see Kennedy, and he went to see Reagan, right? No, Who it was, it was the, one, he, the one that he kissed. Right. Right. That's okay. Just Does keeping, he want you? No, no, no he just I'm doesn't just want me to, like, get into the lens. hair sometimes is getting Right, it. right. You got to do something with that hair, honey. No. <laughs> um, no, I know uh, when he kissed Nixon... You would have thought that he was the only black person, because during that time we were called black, the only black person that voted for Nixon. All the blacks in Harlem just turned their back on my child. But they didn't know all of them up there voted for Nixon. Well, you said another great thing. You said... Uh when Frank was a Democrat, Sammy was a Democrat, and then when Frank became a Republican. That's, whatever Frank did, that was it. Sammy would go too, would follow. So can you say that about Frank? Oh, of course. When, when uh, Nick, when uh, Kennedy didn't want Sam to be involved, involved with the, the election, that's when Frank went and became a Republican. And right after that, Sammy became a Republican and kissed Nixon in front of a million people. <laughs> That's very good. All right, now, are there any Joey Bishop stories? Did you know him at all, Joey Bishop? No, Joey I just met him Joey? like uh, if he was backstage. I don't know too much about okay. him. I don't uh, know too much about none of them. Tell me. There's something else, though, that you were saying to me, too, the first day we met. You said that the guys who were in the mob were always great to you, that their word was good, that the mob, the mob guys, that their word was good. Can you tell me a little bit about your experiences over all these years, what makes you feel that way about them? Well, you see, when I met these people that came into anybody's dressing room, whether it was Sammy's or, or, or anybody that was working with Sammy, I didn't know what they were. And it made no difference to me because they were nice people. But when I did find out that probably it was the cousins, that's what I call them, uh, they were all lovely to me. And I had a thing saying about them that if you kept your mouth shut, you would be all right. Don't ever talk what you know. Keep it to yourself. Very good. 
All right, now, um, there's been a lot of talk over the years about who was, who was instrumental in making it possible for Sammy to stay at the hotels because when they were, when he was first starting out with his father and Will, that um, they couldn't stay at the hotels. Now, now with, are you talking, excuse about, me, oh, yeah, go ahead. are you talking about Florida or are you about talking about Vegas? About Vegas? Well, I don't know whether you were, well, you know, during that time, um, Jack and Trotter had, had something to do with the scans. Now, I don't know whether he helped to get Sammy into the hotels, but during that time, Sammy wouldn't, sometimes wouldn't do a show unless there were black people in the audience. I don't care what they would say about my child, he was, I mean, for his people. So, but when it changed and there was no more restriction a black performer staying in the hotel and Sammy could stay at the hotel and eat at the hotel and who do you think, do you think that it was, it was Sinatra that made that happen or do you think that it was like Jerry Lewis or? No, if anything happened as, as far as Sammy was concerned, it would have been Frank. I think it would have been Frank. Because Frank had the swing? Well, I mean, uh, Frank's voice, you know, everybody listened. Okay, she's got to say that again. Yeah, you heard how yeah. bad that was. Yeah, right? I heard that. Okay. Let's just do that one again. What? Talk again about about uh, uh, Frank's, when Frank spoke, everybody listened, you know. Well, I we mean, had the motorcycle outside. It was, the Sa it was Frank that was the cause of Sammy getting a whole lot of things. Because when Frank talked, I'm dribbling. When Frank talked, people listened. And uh, there's also been okay. Let's talk. Let's switch now. Let's talk a little bit about May. Can you tell me the first time you met May, Britt? Well, I met her. I think before they got married. And when they got married, she was pregnant. Or right after they got married, she was pregnant. And she had to uh, stay in bed, you know, because they didn't want her to lose the baby. But she was, she was and she is the most gracious lady that I know. Uh, you still have noise outside? It works. And I don't, maybe I hope I don't hurt anyone's feelings. But she is really the only daughter-in-law that I considered a daughter-in-law. And why is that? I don't know, because she was just warm. She was wonderful, and she is wonderful. And why, do you have any idea? Hold on a second, Carol. We're getting a clicking from the chair. The Cotton Club, the movie. I ended up, none of what I did was in the movie. I ended up on the floor. They cut it out. So you, were you going to cut it out? <laughs> Did she just take that, that medallion and put it outside yeah, and it, it was wasn't? Inside. It was inside. Oh. You have to leave it inside now. I have to? Yeah, because yeah. it's inside in all the other takes. It'll look like it popped out. Right. So it's got to go back in. Sorry. Sorry. Um, okay, so... Um, do you have any, can you give me some idea of what you think Sammy's life was like with my, uh, from the point of view, remember you said to me that when the guys would go out on the road, the wives all stayed home. Can you give me an idea of how you thought their life was? In other words, well, did you see Sammy, do you think that Sammy kept her like at home a lot? Did he take her with him a lot? Do you have well, any I don't think that she traveled with Sammy. Because for one thing, she had Tracy before she got, you know, before she got the other kids. But she was a homebody, you know. Right. And, and what do you think broke them up? 
I don't know, darling. Do you think it was that she, that he was away too much and he had just too it many? It could have been, because she was very, very a uh, home person. Because Jeannie Martin told me that it was just that Dean was never there. Their, their well, interests that could were to be, be well, always off with each other. Well, there's a million of of, uh, of uh, families break up because the husbands are not there. Well, we know about Trump, you know, she's saying the same thing. Right. But do you think that, um, from what you knew about Sammy, that he just would get too restless if he weren't, like, performing and out with all Well, the oh, my goodness. You could put on a spotlight. You can put the light on in the lamp, and he'd get up and do two courses. <laughs> so you think he had to be on the road? He had to. That's the way he was raised, and that's the way That's he the way he, he knew. That's the only thing he knew. I remember one time I met, um, I was traveling with, with Buck and Bubbles, and I think it was um, in Boston. And... Uh, Buck and Bubbles was with, I was with Buck and Bubbles, and Sammy and the Will Maston Trio was working somewhere else. Sammy used to come backstage and watch Bubbles. That night we were all invited to where Bubbles and uh, Buck and Bubbles worked. Sammy was invited up on the stage, did all of Bubbles routine. And when we got back the next day in the theater, he said to me, he said, I don't mind Sammy coming to see you, but I don't want him in the wings no more. I don't want him watching me stealing my steps. <laughs> and that's what he did. And how old was he then? Oh, about 16. Um, okay. Watch your head, Carol. Okay. Um, oh, don't stick your head in front of the camera. What are you saying? Oh, I'm just no, telling. Just I'm saying, just saying to Carol, watch your I'm head. I'm not moving she's at all. Getting, she oh. keeps leaning over, and you know. Okay. That's all. Um, we got two minutes on the camera. Okay. Um, <clears throat> tell me a little bit about. Um, Bad traffic. Okay. Roll it. Tell me uh, what you said to me about what Keely Smith said about Sammy. Well, I never had the pleasure of meeting Keely Smith, but I've heard a couple of stories concerning her. And the, the person who told me said, Keely made a remark, probably if she had blonde hair, she would have a, a she would be able to have something to do with Sammy. But since she had black hair, he didn't like black hair people. <laughs> you think that was true? I don't know, darling. Um, now, let's talk about uh, the, the, the gift giving that they used to do. There, there's all kinds of things about how Frank would give Sammy something, and Sammy would give Frank cufflinks, then... Reload. The, 